It's home to the bear's leaf monkey, the great hornbill, the ancient saw tree, Shoria robusta. We are in Dehong on the southwestern edge of China in Yunnan Province. China's biodiversity, best witnessed here, up close. I'm joined by a UN official on this research trip as we head deeper into the rainforest, explore the wilds and nature reserves, and meet the local community who have been living in harmony with nature. Out in China's wild with Tianwei. China, one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. It is home to 10% of the world's plant species, 14% of the world's animal species, and 20% of its fish. Countless species are here on this magnificent landscape. Every one of them tells a great story. I was, huh? I was, I was worried we would get stuck at some point. I have to say, I don't think I have been as remote as this. Well, this is already on the border. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is the first time for both of us to visit Dehong. We head deeper into the rainforest to explore its incredible circle of life. Dehong, sitting on the extreme southwestern edge of China, unaffected by the last ice age, it is one of the most biodiverse places in this country. Nice forest here. These infrared cameras hidden in the woods are the secret eyes of key species monitoring. In the process of conservation and research, Dehong has had more than 220,000 photos and videos with infrared camera. Some 79 wildlife species are monitored, including eight types of China's national first-class protected animals. The subtropical rainforests here provide enough space and food for wild animals to thrive, allowing even the tiniest species to flourish. The footage of Zhang Shanghe bears witness to everything. Zheng Shanghe works as a middle school language teacher, but the 51-year-old enjoys being an ecological photographer in his spare time. Fayer's leaf monkey is also known as Fayer's langur. Listed as one of the world's endangered species, they are under first class state protection in China. Zheng Shanghe is the one who discovered their largest group. Wow! 
，主要是他的眼睛特别的，嗯、让人觉得爱怜。嗯。一看就有那种喜欢的感觉，是啊，油然而生。对，呃、小金猴，金猴，刚刚出生不久，对，他在妈妈的怀里。好、哦、哇，好漂亮！你看他们俩的眼神都那么天真的感觉，嗯。你看这个，这个很漂亮。这一只是刚刚出生的小猴。哦。你看他的眼睛，好像在憧憬未来的感觉。今年呢，数了一数。又有十一只小金猴出生，所以说这个队伍就在不断的壮大，而且这一群猴子现在已经和我们处成了朋友了。它不再现在原来那样怕生，它现在和人呢越来越啊接近。OK， 哎，你们看，那里那那一个地方有有猴子在动了，看到吗？对对对对对。嗯，哎，那你看那个在在那里飞。<笑>在那里，小猴在那里吃，吃的食物有很多。嗯嗯嗯嗯。哎呦，我都不能等了。看一下。我们保护好这一群猴子们，其实也就是为了保护好我们这一片森林和我们赖以生存的水。There are more than 720 species of birds living in Dehong currently, accounting for almost a half of the bird species in China. All five hornbill species in China can only be seen in Yinjiang County. In Dehong, there are many ethnic minorities. It is said that the Jingpo first lived on the Tibetan plateau, and later they followed the Hornbill's migratory route all the way to Dehong. No wonder Hornbills are everywhere. My Jingpo friends invited Biati and me to join their dance team. It is well known as Hunao Zongge. It means dancing together in the Jingpo language. In mythology, the hornbill learned the movements from the sun god. We had an unforgettable evening, mimicking the steps of Hornbill. Look up here also. It's a bit uh, yeah. steep, a bit, but uh, yeah. The next morning, we are heading to see the real creatures. The weather plays a trick on us. Dehong enters the rainy season in June. It is not the best time for bird watching. But surprisingly, we meet avid bird watchers. Ban Dingying is one of them. This is his nest. And now he is in the nest. That is the home of the great hornbill. Inside, now is the baby hornbill. Huh? So. The mother might be also inside, but the father flies away earlier and will bring back food. That's how it works. Now we need patience. 得耐心。对，得耐心的等。耐心。好，我们有耐心。对对对，一定能看得到。So beautiful, no? No, so beautiful. I think it's rare to have them both. He's together. saying it's yeah. so rare that it's the two of them rare. will be together. Yeah, yeah. 你看，像这个犀鸟最大一个特征是，它有眼睫毛，看到没有？睫毛特别的长。Look at that, eyelashes. <laughs> Longer than mine. 那整个的这种
很有意思。我你的起头很好，嗯，还可以再放大一点。嗯、这他那个手术的起头特别好，是，不光好，好多了。哎呀，您这有这么多好照片、嗯、呃，拍鸟大概、嗯。七年到八年的时间了，嗯、呃，在这个过程当中呢，有很多的惊喜。今天看到的是，应该说最大的一种犀鸟，啊、嗯呃，也是最漂亮的。嗯，我都觉得看到他们这样的家庭，让人心里觉得很甜蜜。<笑>像犀鸟，其实不仅仅是能够看到美丽的照片、嗯，其实它对于我们摄影师来说，它就像我们朋友一样，得、嗯、给朋友拍个照。那、嗯、其次呢 ？When the birds are no longer afraid of the camera. It means that biodiversity conservation efforts are paying off. In February 2017, the Institute of Zoology of the Chinese Academy of Sciences confirmed that a photo of an adult male, the gray-bellied tragopan, was taken in the home. It was the first time the gray-bellied tragopan has been photographed in a natural habitat in China. In 2021, the vulnerable species. Rufous-necked hornbill appeared in the home. It was last seen 30 years ago. Another one of the world's endangered species, the black-bellied tern, reappeared here after 61-year gap. But it's not enough to simply increase the population size of species. To protect the biodiversity, humans should have a better understanding of the species. And the ecosystems which they depend on for their survival. It's home to the bear's leaf monkey, the great hornbill, the ancient saw tree, Shoria robus. We are in Dehong on the southwestern edge of China in Yunnan Province. China's biodiversity best witnessed here, up close. I'm joined by a UN official on this research trip as we head deeper into the rainforest, explore the wilds and nature reserves, and meet the local community who have been living in harmony with nature. Out in China's wild. With Tianwei, this is the well-preserved westernmost tropical rainforest in China. Forests are the most biologically diverse ecosystems on land. They have just the right amount of light, water, and nutrients for 90 percent of the torrential species of animals. 我们这我们这个地方就像一个一,一把三角形一样的插到了缅甸腹地。那是那条江、啊。对，在在国内叫大营江，到缅甸了以后就叫伊洛瓦底江，是中国唯一一个在伊洛瓦底江水系上的一个保护区。嗯嗯。我们保护区中，从最低海拔两百一十米、嗯，一直到最高的三千四百零四点四米、嗯。最低海拔有鲫鱼林，一直到长绿阔叶林到。高山的草甸龙啊，都有，所以它植被类型就很很丰富。对，然后不同的植被类型下边就孕育了不同的植物，不同的植物下边又有不同的动物，物种就相当丰富。大的是吧？太棒了！这叫龙脑山，这是我们保护区的主要的保护对象。Shoria robusta is an iconic species of the tropical rainforest. It is a rare, crucial plant under second-class state protection in China. Many other rare wild plants are also found in this reserve. Over the past years, Gong Changbang and his colleagues have taken photographs of endangered plants around the reserve.
其实当地人为了生计，呃，伐树啊，卖一些植物啊，也是可以理解。但是呢，为了保护植物，确实是不能这么做，嗯，那你怎么跟咱们当地老百姓沟通啊，让他们明白这个道理？啊，我就是做宣传工作的，然后在一些微信公众号呀，我们就把它打印成画册的方式，嗯、然后就把这些画册拿到他们村子里面去展示，那、嗯、下次他们就很会注意了、嗯，就不会因为一些，因为他们不认识这些植物。而在无意在生产生活中无意中被把它破坏掉。有一些保护植物，它在外边野外是呃很就像滇藏蓝，它没有办法在野外很难完成自己更新。为此呢，我们就在会采集一些它的种子呀、枝条啊，然后拿去繁育出来。现在我们大环境变了，我们就需要保护生态、保护环境、保护野生动物。绿水青山就是金山银山，然后我们这边也是。呃，资源这么丰富，然后我们要把它充分的利用起来。Our planet is suffering the greatest biological loss since the time of the dinosaurs. About one million species of plants and animals are now at risk of extinction. China is working to protect the natural environment. China was the chair of COP15. The first stage meeting was held in Yunnan Province. We are coming to the end of the expedition in Yunnan's biodiversity hotspots. To be honest, both of us, Biate and I, don't want to leave the home. Biate, thank you so much for joining us. All I want to say is. What a trip! So many unforgettable moments for us. What is your favorite? So my favorite, I think, is the hornbills that we saw, and the male and female、uh, nurturing their young and feeding, right, and flying back and forth, and、uh, this whole song and dance that they did around the tree, communicating. So that was really beautiful to see. But I think it's a memorable trip in the sense that, of course, Yunnan. Is so well known for its、uh, biodiversity, right? It's China's most important, probably biodiversity hotspot. It's one of the most important in the world, and I think seeing it and experiencing it firsthand for me was really very, very powerful. And、uh, also seeing, you know, at the on the with the example of that nature reserve, that actually if you leave nature intact,、mm. it takes care of itself. We don't need to do anything, right? But also then seeing the people, rangers, and how they care about it and make sure it's protected. Well, I think that's exactly right, and I think this has、uh, changed in China quite a bit over the years. And that China has invested a lot of policies and、uh, also financial resources. Into the protection of、uh, nature, you can see that at the macro level, where China has、uh, introduced the ecological red line policy, that is、uh, looking at how China can protect uh, uh, valuable ecosystems better、um, and、uh, ensure that they can function both as ecosystems but also for people. China currently has 18% of its land mass under some type of a protection status. The goal is 30% by 2030, according to the new global biodiversity.、Uh, Chinese uh, President Xi Jinping、mm. talks about、uh, the aspiration of、uh, mm. Chinese modernization,、mm. and certainly among the modernization issues, one about ecological protection,、mm -hmm. crucial. And biodiversity、mm. as well. So,、mm. how do you see this level of policy、mm. that biodiversity and ecological protection has been uplifted to,、mm. uh, in order to contribute to the final result?、Mm. Firstly, that we really have to increase the financing that goes into it. Globally, uh, the uh, financing needs for biodiversity protection are around 800 billion dollars、uh, a year. What is currently funded funded is 142 billion a year. So that's a mere 0.1 percent of global、uh, GDP. 
right? So it's, it's also about then directing resources towards nature positive uh, investments. There again, I think China at the COP15 has sent a very important signal with the establishment of the Kunming Biodiversity Fund, uh, 1.5 uh, billion Jaminbi, uh, to support biodiversity uh, protection efforts in uh, South South partner countries, developing uh, uh, countries. But I think we also need to make sure that we get the private sector in, right, and that we uh, direct private sector financing towards uh, biodiversity protection and that more importantly we actually put the concept of sustainability at the core of uh, business models mm -hmm. and that actually makes a lot of sense uh, financially we know that uh, nature positive investments can actually yield mm -hmm. a 10 trillion dollar economy create 390 million uh, jobs by 2030. I think the second point is that we need to think biodiversity protection much more comprehensively, right? So you need to think it across sectors, across habitats, across regions, because biodiversity doesn't stop at, you know, let's say, say prefecture borders or certain habitats, right? We need to think it in an integrated manner, protecting land, water and sea uh, ecosystems in an integrated uh, way. China is also continuing on, on that uh, uh, path at the COP15, the Biodiversity Conference of the Parties in uh, Kunming, the first leg. China announced the establishment of five uh, national parks with the highest protection levels and that will protect 30% of its uh, terrestrial uh, wildlife and uh, species. So there is a lot of, I think, commitment and uh, policies in place. And now China has been talking about uh, and been working on the high quality growth. Mm. Of course, this is mm. also based on you know, the common aspiration of uh, sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. China talks about the Global Development Initiative, for example. Mm -hmm. It's a Chinese way of mm -hmm. uh, describing how mm -hmm. China will do to contribute to SDGs. Mm -hmm. So along the way, how much do you see has been China's contribution? This aspiration that China mm -hmm. has raised mm -hmm. for itself mm -hmm. about the global development, mm -hmm. how much will that contribute to what you already mm. described, very important efforts mm. now to concentrate mm. on working together toward mm. SDGs. First of all, China is the second biggest economy in the world. It is the largest emitter of greenhouse gases. So this, uh, um, China's goals, for example, on peaking emissions by 2030 and becoming carbon neutral by 2060 is absolutely uh, crucial, right? Its efforts on because of the size of its land mass, right, on biodiversity protection, really moving towards the 30% is is crucial. In in terms of international cooperation, uh, China is uh, becoming an uh, increasingly important uh, uh, funder of uh, international development cooperation of South South. China's announcement, the announcement of presidency in. 2021 at the General Assembly um, to commit China to moving out of uh, financing of uh, coal power plants overseas and supporting uh, developing countries in their green economy and their green energy transformation, I think was a very important uh, announcement. Um, and uh, the investments uh, that China makes helping countries to um, to address these very intractable um, and very complex development uh, challenges, mm. I think is very important. Lastly, uh, Beate, how much of what we see, mm -hmm. of what we discuss about mm. biodiversity can help us build more cooperation, confidence mm. and coordination toward a shared future of humankind? Mm. I think we urgently need coordination, cooperation, confidence about our common future. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, tell us more about your thoughts. Biodiversity is really in, in jeopardy and uh, we're seeing massive decline of biodiversity. We're losing 200 species a day. That's a rate faster than any time in history. We're losing 10 million hectares of forest a year. That's the size of South Korea. And the projections show that we will have one-fifth of country seeing collapse of their ecosystems. So it's really alarming. I think the, the Kunming uh, Montreal declaration right, of the uh, COP15, uh, which uh, is now our new global biodiversity framework, um, goes to show. Because I think going into the second legs, the, the hopes were quite muted. And still we managed, and China presided over the negotiations successfully, managed to come up as a global inter, uh, community uh, with a framework. Uh, that framework has 23 targets, so it's monitorable, right, by 2030 to be achieved. Um, there were 60 resolutions on biodiversity uh, that were agreed. I think it does show the, the potential. And uh, going now then into also the next uh, climate COP, let's hope that we can continue on this upward m momentum because we as humankind, we need these commitments and we need the commitments and, and the action and yeah. there is absolutely no time to lose. That is so important to make everybody aware of and also to make sure that they feel they're interconnected with everything around us. As a person that I have that opportunity to make whatever small uh, contribution it may be to making sure that the world turns the page and that we protect this beautiful planet that we live on. There's only one in the galaxy. Birds, trees, flowers, and monkeys. Together they breathe life into this incredible and irreplaceable biodiversity. Humans have only one choice, which is to create a modern society in harmony with nature. We are still on the way.